Dear Lord, thank you so much for this day that we get to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for loving us right where we're at. Lord, um, just ask that you would just have your way today as we uh, just spend time worshiping you through song and through prayer and through your word. And um, we just pray, God, that you would bring comfort and peace and joy and just a sense of um, community, Lord, on this Easter Sunday, Lord. Thank you so much for all that you're doing and that you have such a great plan for our lives. Just uh, give us ears to hear what you have to say today, Lord. Just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, uh, good morning, friends, family, neighbors. I wrote some notes. There's people here and there's people on the live stream. And uh, I just wanted to kind of give a little bit of an intro. So, obviously, in this time of social distancing and self-quarantining, we want to you know, we wanted to bring the message of hope to our neighborhood. Um, so this Easter Sunday, 2020, we invite you to celebrate with us the truth that Jesus Christ has resurrected from the dead over 2,000 years ago. So let us remain six feet apart during this season of our lives. <laughs> and um, yeah, so uh, praise the Lord, man. So my wife's going to open in prayer, and then we're going to do some music, and then uh, we're going to read out of the word. You guys go ahead and pray with me. Lord, we are so grateful to be here in your presence, Lord. We thank you that your word is true when it says where two or more are gathered, that you're here. And God, thank you for the lesson that you're teaching us, God, that even though we've always known it in our minds, Lord, just a refreshing remember, reminder, Lord, that the church is not the building. It's not where we go and meet. It's us, those who believe, those who follow. We are your church, and we are just so grateful, Lord, to be your church, and thank you for the sacrifice that you made for your blood that was poured on this cross for us, God. We love you, Lord, and we just want to lift you up today, and uh, may you be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. The whole earth is filled. The whole earth is filled. Filled with your glory. Filled with your glory. My whole life is filled. My whole life is filled. Filled with your glory, filled with your glory, cause your love is alive, your love is alive, your love is beating inside of my heart, my soul and my mind, your love is alive. Your love is alive. Your love is leading me into the way and the truth and the life. Yes, the whole world is filled. The whole earth is filled. Filled with your glory. Filled with your glory, my whole life, my whole life is filled. My whole life is filled. Filled with your glory. Filled with your glory. Because your love is life. Your love is alive. Your love is alive. Your love is beating inside of my heart, my soul, and my mind. 
Your love is alive. Your love is alive. Your love is leading me into the way, the truth, and the light. When blinded by darkness, or lost out as he, even in death, you're always with me. And when I am fearful, oh, I won't be afraid. Oh, Spirit, remind me that your presence remains. Our whole life is filled. Our whole life is filled. Filled with His glory, filled with His glory, our whole life is filled, our whole life is filled, filled with His glory, yes, filled with His glory, cause your love is alive. Your love is alive. Your love is beating inside of my heart, my soul, and my mind. Your love is alive. Your love is alive. Your love is leading me into the way the truth and the lie your love is a lie your love is a lie your love is leading me into the way the truth and the lie You are here, moving in the midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Yes, you are way make miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every life. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Mending every heart I worship you I worship you You are way maker, miracle worker Promise keeper, light in the darkness My God, that is who you are Way maker, 
Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, that is who you are. 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 Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see that you work. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. Waymaker, miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, that is who you are. That is who you are.
that he is good. Who shouted? Who was dreaming?
Father, you are, you are just so amazing. And I thank you, God, that we have such freedom to worship you in public like this. Because in other countries, to express our love for our God, we have to be hidden. But here in the United States of America, we have the freedom to praise you on our own front yard. <laughs> God, I just thank you so much. They have a special prayer over our medical people and over our military, Lord, who are constantly fighting the front lines for us in this pandemic. Jesus, please just put your hand upon them. Keep them safe. Keep them comforted. And help those of us that are shelter in place, Lord, to keep our, our hope in you and, and fear needs to bow, Lord. Help us to keep our faith in you and our hope in you. Trusting you that you are always faithful. Doubt, 
But I know that your roots go deep and wide and so secure Through every single season your love endures Jesus, the more that I try You're always faithful, Jesus. The more that I trust you, the more that I find you. Always faithful. Yes, you're always faithful. Yes, Lord. God, as we just continue to worship you your word God I pray that your word would go forth in our hearts and our minds this morning as we ponder on a simple story that can easily be overlooked but a story that is just as meaningful and impactful God help us to relate to your word this morning thank you Jesus for all you've done for all you're doing and all that you're going to continue to do. I just pray a supernatural prayer over uh, Pastor Brian as he comes forward and ministers to us with this chunk of life from your, from your breath alone. In Jesus' name, amen. Someone needs to do something about the gophers in this grass. Let's see.
So I'm going I'm to pray again. Father God, thank you so much for your word and that it never turns back void. Just ask Jesus that you'd remove me, that you just uh, speak, God, as you see fit through your word, by your spirit. Thank you, Lord, that, um, again, that we're able to celebrate you, Father God. Thank you for our neighbors and this neighborhood that you've given us, Lord. It's such a blessing, God. Thank you for all of our neighbors here, Lord. Thank you for all the kids. Thank you that you're at work, Lord God. Even when we can't see you working, you're at work. Thank you, Father, for um, whoever's watching on the live stream, God. I just pray, Lord, that you'd minister as well there. Lord, thank you that even in the pandemic, Lord, and the fear of coronavirus and all the different things, Lord, that you give us the freedom to worship and the freedom to have relationships and the freedom, God, in this country, Lord. Father, I just pray that you would keep everyone safe, Lord. Again, I just echo the prayers of my wife and others, Lord. We just pray for those that are in the medical industry, that are in the hospitals, Lord, in the ER, Lord. Um, my neighbor, Gunner, Lord, and his son who work in security, Lord, in the medical industry, God. And I just pray that you would give them um, just a supernatural covering, Lord. Um, just thank you that even in the midst of fear and frustration and and even death god there's life in you and as we come together today lord to celebrate the truth of the resurrection of jesus christ lord i pray that the truth of your resurrecting from the dead would ring in our soul lord that you conquered death that you gave us hope that comes from you god through your son your son satisfying your requirement of a pure sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus, that you endured the shame of the cross and your, the joy of that work was before you, God, the joy that you would draw people unto you, unto salvation. Thank you that through your birth and death and resurrection that there's eternal life available to all of us. And we just praise you and give you all the glory. And, and God, I, I just thank you that your word never turns back void. Just have your way today, Lord. Thank you so much, God. May this all be about you, Jesus, Lord. May we fall to the wayside and that you be seen, God. May you be glorified and honored. Just pray for all the other churches, God, and all the other believers, and just this community, Lord, this world, Lord, that's just in a place of unknown uncertainty, different life, living, like what's our new norm, God? And I thank you that in the middle of all of that, Lord, your word continues to ring true that you are stable and faithful and you are worthy of our trust. Thank you that you're not a liar, that you are life, that you are the light of men. And I pray, God, that you would just help us, help us in this time of need, help us to hear your voice, help us to hear your call in our heart, you hear your call in our soul, help us to listen to you, to help out neighbors and and be a friend and be hospitable, God. Just get us out of your way, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for your word and just for the opportunity to, to share about you today, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. One thing I love about this neighborhood is there's always kids running around everywhere on all sorts of different devices and stuff. It's fun. So, I kind of, I'm going to start this out this way. Have you ever walked through a trial? One that caused your life to turn upside down? Kind of what we're all experiencing in this season of our lives. Our lives are turned upside down right now. Our new normal is different. We're not used to how things are. We're confined to our houses. Grandparents can't hug their kid, their grandchildren, stuff of that nature. You know, some of us may be feeling hopeless and angry and sad, bitter, untrusting. We're going to read a passage today where there's two disciples that walked together after Christ's crucifixion and resurrection. 
and they talked with themselves. And so I ask you, you know, what kind of conversations are you all having with your friends and family? Are there discussions of what's next or maybe where's the truth in all of this? Maybe where's the hope in all of this? Well, I'm here to share with you today that in the face of deep uncertainty, God is at work. Just like over 2,000 years ago, the disciples who loved Jesus and knew he was the light that had come into the world, the light seemed to be snuffed out. The tomb that Jesus' dead body had been lying in, on the third day, the tomb was empty, just as he had said. Jesus spoke in Mark chapter 9, verse 31. For he taught his disciples and said to them, The Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And after he is killed, he will rise the third day. So we're going to pick up in this message today from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verse 13 through 35. So we're going to be looking at the account of these disciples that were walking from Jerusalem to a village called Emmaus. Now behold, two of them were traveling the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. So it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. And he said to them, what kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk? And are sad. Then the one whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem, and have you not known the things which happened there these days? And he, being Jesus, said to them, What things? So they said to him, The things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. And how the chief priests and the rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, today is the third day since these things happened. Yes, and certain women of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us. When they did not find his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but him they did not see. Then he said to them, O foolish ones, this is Jesus speaking, O foolish ones and slow of heart, to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Then they drew near to the village where they were going, and he indicated that he would have gone farther. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. Now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, that he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they knew him. And he vanished from their sight. And they said to one another, Did not our hearts burn within us? Did not our heart burn within us 
while we talked with while he talked with us on the road and while and while he opened the scriptures to us so they rose up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the 11 and those who were with them gathered together saying the Lord is risen indeed and has appeared to Simon and they told about the things that had happened on the road and how he was known and how he was known to them in the breaking of bread so we see here sorry this setup's really distracting it's okay what was that I'm bright. Oh, am I not seen? So we see here in verses 13 and 14 that these two were discussing the events of the week. See, Jesus had had been taken to Pilate and been crucified. And these two disciples, they were walking together and they were talking about most likely the crucifixion, the hour that the sky was dark, the earth quaked when Christ died, um, and you know his side being pierced, blood and water flowing out of his side. This this event of Christ dying was this huge public event amongst the community, and so you have these two disciples. We know that they're disciples, so they knew Christ. They they were followers of him. We don't know much about them in regards to what disciple they were. We know one of their names, but we don't know the other persons. In verse 15, it says this, you know, um, so it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went to them. So you see the living Savior, Jesus, drew near to his disciples, his people, his followers, and Jesus draws near to us. Um, I want you to think about, in the context of this scripture, these two people were sad. They, They had lost all hope. They, they, their, their, their redeemer that, that, that was supposed to be their king and, and their savior and, 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 and change the situation for their lives. They just watched him brutally put to death on a cross. And, and they, and they heard the account of, of, of these women that traveled, you know, that were part of the disciples, Mary and everybody, that, that the tomb was empty, but, but they have not seen Christ. And so, you have these two people here walking, and I love it how in the middle of their fear and their distrust of what went on, I mean, they knew about Jesus. They knew they walked with Jesus. These people heard his teaching. They, they, they heard him speak about who he is and what he was going to accomplish, and, and yet they were sad. And I love that about this section of Scripture because it takes a reality of who they are as human beings. And a lot of times we can lose sight of, of God loving us. And God coming to our side and God coming to our rescue through Jesus. We get so caught up in our circumstances and these disciples were. They were caught up with their circumstances. They were absolutely distraught. They had lost all hope. You know, my question is, have have any of us ever lost all hope in life? That's a reality for us. God doesn't ask us to be, you know, this perfect being and have our life all put together. He asks us, to be willing to reach out to him. And I love it that even in the middle of these two disciples being sad and, and, and Jesus even in, 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 in this conversation with him, he even almost rebukes him and says, you know, basically, you know, do you not trust me? Are, oh, you have little faith. And I love that, that in the, in the midst of that, he still expounds on his whole life and, and what the scriptures had talked about him. And that's Christ's character towards us, that even in the midst of our doubt and maybe our shame or our frustration, that Jesus willingly comes alongside of us. John 3, 16, I'm sure all of you know this, for God so loved the whole world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. It doesn't say in there if you do this, this, or this, or if you check off this box, or if you became this person, or if you did this well in your job, or this well in your marriage, or anything. It just says that he loves us, and that's why Christ died for us. And the cool thing is that Christ, you see this cross? Yeah, I, I put this up on, on Good Friday. 
but it's empty. There's, there, there's no body on it. Obviously, Jesus wouldn't be hung here. That'd be kind of weird. But, and you can go to the tomb of, of Christ, and, and, and it's empty. You know, you go to Buddha's tomb, and it's not empty. You go to Joseph Smith's tomb, it's not empty. You go to any other supposed religious guru or leader, and their tomb is sealed, and their body is rotting, and Jesus is alive. His tomb is empty, just like he said it would be. And it's amazing, verse 16 says that their eyes were restrained. So for whatever reason, these two disciples' eyes were miraculously miraculously restrained from seeing who Jesus was. See, Jesus came to them. He was physically walking with them. This wasn't some aberration. This wasn't some ghost. This wasn't some spirit. Jesus physically was with them. Jesus physically raised from the dead. Verse 17 through 21, I love how Pastor Chuck Smith states this. He sums it up in a great way. He says this, as if the disciples would have, you know, been saying this to Jesus. Hey, man, you must be a stranger. You don't know the things that have happened around here. There was this fellow Jesus of Nazareth. He was a great guy mighty and power in God, and he went around doing good, and he brought us hope. We hoped. We had trusted that he was going to be the one to bring deliverance, but they crucified him. And this is the third day. So this was their explanation to Christ. You know, I love how Jesus goes and and, and asks them, you know, It's not just, are you sad? He actually inquires. He wants to know. Jesus wants to know about us on our inside. He wants to know everything about us. He's interested in our lives. You know, when I was youth pastoring, I would tell kids, you know, Jesus didn't just draw you to a place to leave you in a field of darkness for you to die and and not alone. And this scripture here testifies of Christ physically coming alongside of these disciples. Verse 25 through 27, I'm kind of recapping and going back through and breaking the scripture apart for y'all, so I usually explain that prior to teaching, but sorry I didn't do that in advance. So he said to them, this is after their explanation, he said to them, O foolish ones, slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all scriptures the things concerning himself. So Jesus took these disciples and walked them through scripture that spoke about him from Genesis to the end. He basically taught them a Bible study about himself the whole way while they're walking. I love that about God, that God doesn't leave us in a place of solitude. He doesn't leave us in a place of not him of him not wanting to minister to us. This is a great character piece of Christ's love towards us and him wanting to explain to us about who he is and what he is about. See, Jesus didn't take their concept of him and go, well, that's it. He listened to them, but then explained who he was. The promises of Jesus, the promises of of salvation, the promises of what God had allowed to be written in the Old Testament and through the prophets. It's amazing that there's over 300 prophecies that Christ himself fulfilled by his birth, his life, his death, and resurrection. 300 prophecies were spoken prior to Christ about his life being born, his life and his death, and his resurrection. The proof of who Jesus is and what he did, it's impossible to explain it away if you really want to know who Jesus is. If you really want to know who God, how God loves us through his son, And you really desire to know that. I believe with all of my heart that God will allow every circumstance in your life for you to come 
to the conclusion of understanding who Jesus is. It's amazing here, as, as Christ walked with them, It says that he played on like he wanted to go further and they wanted him to stay. It was nighttime. You know, picture that. You're with your friends, you're hanging out with them and they came over for a while and you're like, oh, it's dark. Why don't you have dinner with us? And that's how these disciples were with this man that was with them and they still didn't know who Jesus was. And so Jesus comes and and sits and has a meal with them. I don't know about you, but... I've never seen any spirits have a meal, per se. Jesus sat at the head of the table. He broke bread. And when he broke bread, they recognized who Christ was. Some commentators stated that it was possible that they saw finally the piercings in his hands, his wrists. I love that about Jesus, that as he comes, he... He desires all of us to come to a relationship with him. God's word tells us that he wills no one to perish, but all to come to repentance. God's love towards us goes beyond our suffering. It goes beyond our circumstances. It goes beyond the coronavirus. It goes beyond separation of families because we have to self-quarantine. It goes beyond social media. It goes beyond the fear factor that the news is feeding us. It goes beyond all of that. I've been dealing with anxiety and frustration and fear and concern and, and all these things. I look at the news and social media and, and, we, and our neighbors here, we all talk and stuff. And I have to go and I have to look and say, okay, Lord, you are God and you are able to save because your word tells me that. The question is, do you trust God with your life? Have you given your life over to him? Have you allowed him to sit with you and break bread with you? Have you allowed him to walk with you in your time of trial and frustration? Have you been honest with him? I think sometimes in life, like we're not honest with God. We we either shrug off what he's trying to do in our life or we just ignore the fact that he wants to have an open relationship with us and talk with us. You know, I find in my own personal life that the only thing that's ever been faithful and true in my life is Jesus pursuing me, even in the midst of me not pursuing him. It's the same state that these disciples were in. Their hopes were dashed. Their lives were crushed. Their leader was gone. They watched him be murdered, and he came alive, and the tomb is empty. And these disciples heard that, but they haven't seen anything. And I love that about Jesus, that even if our circumstances seem bleak, that he will go beyond the grave to save us. See, one thing in life is guaranteed. Well, two things. I always say this. Um, Death and taxes. I haven't met anybody that's escaped death yet. And if you're a law-abiding citizen, I haven't met anybody that pays taxes. I mean, doesn't pay taxes. (laughs) Some people are going, yes! Hopefully that canopy doesn't take off. But we're all going to pass away one day. And the real question is, like my dad taught me this a long time ago. I remember if you ever ride with my dad, he's standing over there. If you ever ride with Richard Deal in an elevator and a stranger comes in, he'll ask them the question, do you know where you're going when you go up or down? Like when you pass away, like an elevator, you're stuck with these people. And you're going up, and the the real issue is, do you know where you're ending up going after you go up? I probably ruined that. But you get the point. So check this out. This is important. A lot of times in life, you know, we hear preachers preach, and we hear people read the Bible, and then what if, you know, what, how do we know that this is true? How do we know that, that, that what is in here? is fact. That's really important. It's extremely important. We have to know that this is truth. Well, I found some information out about what it means to have a true testimony. 
In other words, when two people come and corroborate a scenario, if one person just speaks about it, it's hearsay. If two people speak about it, I don't know if you've ever dealt with police officers, but I did a lot when I was a young kid, and it wasn't because they liked me going in their cars to travel to help them. And I remember one time when the police officer was like, hey, he talked with my friend and he talked with me separate, and I didn't like that. But he used that scenario, that situation, to corroborate if what was happening was truth or false. And that's a natural thing that we do. That's why when we go to court, there's witnesses, right? You got witnesses in a court hearing. What if there was only one witness? No, we would never agree to anything, any of the circumstances. So a true testimony is this. Three things are required to make a testimony trustworthy. The witnesses must be competent and firsthand witnesses. Those are two facts. We can all agree on that. A witness must be competent. In other words, they must be sound mind of good judgment. They must have a good rapport in, the, in society. And they must be an eyewitness. How many of you guys have ever testified of a car accident or something and, and, you, and, and you were a witness of it and you, you feel great. You're like, okay, I saw this. I want to give account to it. Then the insurance company calls you up and says, hey, what happened? You became a witness. So the other thing about a true testimony is there must be an abundant in numbers. Again, it can't just be one person. And they must have a good reputation, like I had mentioned. So what does that mean, and how does that apply to this? Well, it applies in this way. Because we're talking about Jesus Christ coming back from the dead. I haven't been to Israel. I haven't seen his tomb. I know Elisha over here has. He walked over there before. But how do we know that it's true? Well, the apostles qualify in all three respects. They were eyewitnesses. They did not base their teaching on their own reports, of, uh, on, on the reports of others. Sorry. Also, God's word states that there were over 500 eyewitnesses who saw the risen Lord Jesus Christ. 500. I don't know. It, no one could ever make up a story where 500 people see the exact same person at the exact same timeline. Over 40 days, 500 people witnessed Christ's physical resurrected body. Him talking with them, the, interacting with them. So the apostles could not have had any ulterior motive for proclaiming the facts of Christ's resurrection. In fact, they proclaimed Christ's resurrection at the risk of their lives. You weren't too popular if you were proclaiming the resurrection of Jesus Christ during that time. So in closing, that's when everybody gets excited when there's preachers, in closing. So in closing... I want to read from John 14, 1 through 3, and then Romans 10, 9 through 13. Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If there were not so, I would have, not, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. This is Christ's promise to us, that he goes and prepares a place. He's preparing a place for you and for me in heaven. That's our joy. That's our hope, that, that Christ not just, he didn't die on the cross and that was it. He resurrected from the dead. God resurrected him from the dead, accomplishing the work of destroying death. So through Christ, we have the forgiveness of sin, the breaking of the bondage of sin in our lives. If, if Christ isn't in your heart, you're bound to his sinful nature. That's why people, if I've talked with them and they get frustrated, they're like, you know, these people are out doing this and doing that and doing these things all so bad. And I'm like, well, you know what? If if there isn't something inside of them that's a barometer different than their flesh, then why would they be doing anything different, you know? 
without Jesus, we're just going about our day, doing things that we want to do without any barometer of righteousness. So Jesus is preparing this place for us in heaven. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 13 says this. I love this. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. That, that piece of believing in your heart, it's not about saying something so a preacher hears you. It's that place that, that is between a human being and God. See, God created mankind to have a relationship with him through Jesus Christ. You go all the way back to Genesis and you read about the relationship of Adam and Eve and God. And they decided to be disobedient. And they ruined that relationship. And so all through the Old Testament and through the prophets and then the New Testament, Christ is born and, and comes on the scene. And the whole purpose of Jesus coming is to reconcile that original relationship that God wants to have with us as human beings. The whole world. That's why John 3.16 says that he loves the whole world. Again, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Verse 10 says this, For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, Whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. Isn't that amazing? How many of us feel shame just in our own doings in life? I, 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 I mess up so much in my marriage with my relationship. I'm, a, I'm an idiot with my wife so much, man. She's so loving to me and gracious. Some of you guys watch my wife and I interact, and you're probably thinking, why did she put up with him? But I love this, that, that, that whoever believes in Jesus Christ will not be put to shame. That's a promise that was written in the blood of Jesus. That's a promise that was written by God through Christ that we can take and have ownership of. It's a free gift. Verse 12 says this, For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. That's amazing too. See, Jesus, the, the, the God, the, in Romans, it, it takes away social uh, uh, segregation. You know, back then, it was just the Jews were the only people. They were the chosen people of God. But when Christ came, that, that separation of, of only the Jewish people being God's people, the, it, 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 it was torn in two. And all of us who aren't Jews, we're Greeks. That's what it's stating. We're, we're, we're not Jewish people. But Christ came that no matter what race, no matter what ethnic group, that we can all have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. I love that. There's no distinction between Jew and Greek. Jesus is not separating anybody out. He's the same Lord over all and is rich to all who call upon them, on him. It's amazing. There's this richness that God gives us. Do you have that richness in your life? The richness of God. Verse 13 says, For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's that simple. God, help me. Lord, I want to be with you. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. See, that's the thing. We're all sinners. God's word says that all of us have fallen short of his glory. There isn't one person on earth that is righteous. If you look at the Ten Commandments, all, I've broken half of them probably in my lifetime. God's requirement to get to heaven is perfection, and there's no way any of us will get there. And that's why Jesus died. He took our place. And he rose again from the grave and conquered death, so there's eternal life at stake. Like I mentioned before, two things guaranteed in life, death and taxes. My question to people is, and maybe I'm too forward at times, but when you die, do you know if you're going to go to heaven or not? That's the question. All of our churches do all these great things and all these outreaches and all these amazing things in, in, in society, and it makes the church look so great and the pastor looks so great, but are they saying to people, do you know where you're going to go when you die? That's the gospel. Jesus was straight up. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. And we should be convicted by that. 
And it should cause us to go to a place in our soul and say, I want to be in heaven one day. I don't want to perish for eternity because all of us will stand before God one day. There's a book in heaven called the Lamb's Book of Life. And if our name is not written in it, then we're not going to be in heaven. There will be people who don't go to heaven because they have hardened their hearts towards God. God has not hardened his heart towards us. In fact, this coronavirus, in my opinion, is an opportunity to stir us up so that our minds and our thinking could be driven towards things of God. Let me encourage you with this. Wherever you're at in life, God understands. Wherever you're at and you're thinking about God and Jesus and the cross and Easter and church and all these different aspects of religion, God understands. The question isn't, does God understand or does God love me? Because he proved that he loved us by sending his son. The question is, are we willing to ask him, God, will you show me the truth of who you are? Let's pray. Father God, I just thank you so much for your grace and your mercy and your love. And thank you for the work of the cross. Thank you for your death, burial, and resurrection. That you are not in the grave. That you are alive. Just thank you so much. And as the worship team comes up, I'm just going to ask, in the name of Jesus, is there anybody here who needs prayer for anything? Anyone? You know, I'm not sure if Elisha can look online on the Facebook feed over on the other computer and see if anybody needs prayer. Um, Or if anybody here in the neighborhood wants prayer, raise your hand, I'll pray. You know, Um, is there anybody here who doesn't know Jesus? If you'd like to invite Jesus into your heart today and be saved. You know, many years ago, I made a decision for Jesus when I was five. That man over there led me to the Lord. But I was super rebellious and I kept running away from God. And it got me in jail and it got me two DUIs and my life was filled with drug addiction and pornography and and all sorts of bad things. And the one thing that remained true in my whole entire life was God pursuing me. He pursued me. My parents didn't know what to do with me. Society didn't know what to do with me. My classmates didn't know what to do with me. My family didn't know what to do with me. I didn't know what to do with myself. But Jesus knew what to do with me. And he loved me. And I'll never forget this one day when I was coming off drugs. And I'm not making an excuse. There's some people who think that, oh, you know, there's all these hypocrites in Christianity. That could be true. But you know, in God's great wisdom and knowledge and understanding, he knew who I would be and what I would be about as a teenager and a young adult. And I truly believe that he saved me so that I wouldn't have died from when I overdosed on drugs or drove illegally intoxicated or or stole things from people. There was this little light inside of me that kept knocking on my door in my heart, Brian, I'm here. Brian, I love you. He kept knocking on the door of my heart. And it wasn't until I released my will and accepted Christ's love and accepted that Christ loved me in the middle of my failure. It was then that God started to do the work in my life. Did I fail? Yeah. Am I going to fail tomorrow? Yeah every day but I'm telling you here I stand here today to tell you that Jesus is faithful that the Holy Spirit is alive and active and he's pursuing us and he wants us to have a active relationship with God through Jesus Christ he will never leave you he will never forsake you even when you forsake yourself There's some of us today that feel guilty for certain sins. There's some of us today that may not even have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And I implore you today, today, God's word says that today is a day of salvation. 
Make today, Easter Sunday, during the coronavirus of 2020, the day that either you rededicate your life to Jesus. It takes a simple prayer. God, I'm sorry for the things I've done. Will you please come into my life? God's word tells us if we confess our sins to him, that he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And he takes our sin and he throws it as far as the east is from the west. And I tell you, if you travel east and you travel west, you'll never end up east and you'll never end up west. You'll continually going the same direction. And it means that our sins are thrown into the abyss. And there's nothing on earth that can do that except the power of God. It's just like the, the, the prophets would say, David said, God, only against you have I sinned. Because like I mentioned before, one day we're all going to stand before God and he's going to look at us and he said, what have you done? I sent this crazy fat guy next door to talk about Jesus. Did you hear him? <laughs> I sent this person at the grocery store to say they wanted to pray for you. I sent this preacher on TV. I sent this other person here. God is pursuing us. He wants us to be with him for eternity. And heaven's not going to be a boring place. It's not going to be this place of angels playing this dumb song all the time. There's streets of gold. If you read in Revelation, the, there's this bright rainbow around this throne room and there's 24 elders throwing crowns down, their crowns at the feet of Jesus saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Heaven is a miraculous place and it's for us to be there today. Salvation is today. I couldn't end today without sharing those things. Because that's why we do this. Because Jesus saved us. And we want to share the truth of him and his great work in our lives and his great work through his word. So I'm going to pray again. And if anyone needs prayer for anything, just let us know. Even after we're done here, if you need us to pray with you, I know we'll pray six feet apart. God, thank you for your word and for salvation and that all you want us to do is come to you and say, help. Thank you that you're available in our time of need. Right now, God, we really need you. We need you. So I just pray and thank you for your grace and your mercy. Just give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. sin and sinner's verse for every sentence we deserve for every man who walked the earth he loved knowing all the things Knowing still he suffered once The great exchange you took our place For you love And once for all my debts been paid Once for all my guilty stains Once for all mankind and once for all my debts been paid once for all my guilty stains once for all mankind Crown of thorns upon his head, his body beaten, bruised, 
He bled, nailed on to a cross instead of me. He loved and hung beside a calm thief, enduring suffering. Willingly treated as if he were me for love. Once for all my debts been paid, once for all my guilty states, once for all mankind. And once for all my debts been paid, once for all my guilty stains, once for all mankind. Christ, the Lion and the Lamb, our God became a man and took our place. Oh, Christ. The Savior chosen one, oh, the sacrifice is made in one from the grave. Oh, Christ, the Lion and the Lamb, our God became a man and took our place. Oh, once the sacrifice was made. He rose up from the grave, victorious. And once for all my debts been paid, once for all my guilty stains, once for all mankind. Once for all my debts been paid, once for all my guilty stains, once for all mankind oh, once for all my debts been paid once for all my guilty stains once for all mankind once for all my debts been paid once for all my guilty stains once for all mankind once for all my debts been paid, once for all my guilty stains, once for all mankind. Christ, the Lion and the Lamb, our God became a man and took our place. Once the sacrifice was made he rose up from the grave victorious and once for all my debts been paid once for all my guilty stains once for all mankind once for all my debts been paid once for all my guilty stains, once for all mankind. Once for all mankind. Once for all. Once for all. of thorns upon his head his body beaten bruised he bled nailed onto a cross 
instead of me for love tongue be besides a common thief enduring suffering willingly treated as if he was me all for love and once for all my debts been paid once for all my guilty stains once for all mankind once for all my debts been paid once for all my guilty stains once for all mankind thanks for coming out thanks for watching the live stream have an amazing easter celebrate with your family have ham chickens eggs whatever you guys all eat so we're just super blessed to have been able to do this today. So God bless you guys. Have a great afternoon.